After that, I was kind of like this realization is like, I think Bitcoin's different. And I tested myself. I was like, okay, am I using Bitcoin? Yes. I've used it in the past. I'm using it now. It has a use. Am I using any of these shit coins? No. Will I use them in the future? No. Is there any use case for me? No. Yeah, they're just not relevant to me. So fine. I announced, I was like, right, the show's going to go Bitcoin only. We'll focus entirely on Bitcoin. Yeah, and that, that's what it is. You're listening to Because of Bitcoin, a podcast that shares the personal stories of how Bitcoin is having a real impact in people's lives, including mine. I'm your host, Mauricio Di Bartolomeo, the co-founder and CSO of Ledin. And without further ado, let's get started with today's story. Everyone's Bitcoin journey can usually be traced back to a particular need, whether that is the need to protect the value of your savings from inflation, or the need to make a payment where your existing tools don't allow you to, or simply the desire for more personal financial gain. In my family's case, like most Venezuelans, we needed a way to live in a country that was being destroyed by hyperinflation. And that's how we found Bitcoin. Regardless of how your journey starts, there is no real way to predict what the future will hold. And as we've learned from many guests on the show, there will be twists and turns along the way. For Peter McCormack, the host of arguably the world's most popular Bitcoin podcast, Bitcoin entered his life for a very practical reason. He needed to help his mother. And when he couldn't solve his mother's problem using his conventional methods, Bitcoin offered him an alternative solution. What he didn't know at the time was how Bitcoin would eventually transform his life, his career, and even his relationship with his hometown football team. As the host of what Bitcoin did, Peter has released over 600 episodes. He's interviewed and learned from the best and brightest minds in the space. And I wanted to know how his Bitcoin journey started and what he believes has made his podcast a success. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with him as much as I did. This has been a long time uh, dream of mine to be on the other side of the mic with one of my favorite show hosts. And uh, I have the pleasure of having Mr. Peter McCormack with us today. How are you, Peter? I'm good, man. You need, you need better dreams than talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of my education through, uh, through your show and your guests in my early days. And uh, I followed you throughout the journey and it's been great to watch. So uh, it is, it is, uh, you are a legend in the space and I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> well, thank you, Mauricio. It's been great to get to know you as well, man. And yeah, appreciate you having me on. Let's see if you're going to take my job from me. <laughs> I highly, highly doubt it. But this show, actually, we, we focus on a few different things. And uh, we, we like to focus on people's lives and journeys with, with Bitcoin. And one of the places I like to start is your childhood. My earliest, most significant memory was when I was five years old, we went to Yugoslavia on holiday. So the old Yugoslavia before the breakup, before the Balkans uh, war. So what happened is where we lived, we lived in a place called Kempston. It's like a suburb of uh, Bedford. And a Yugoslavian family moved in next door to us. And my mum really kind of helped them settle, uh, helped them learn English, and they became family friends. And they invited us out to visit them in Yugoslavia. So we went out to Belgrade and then to the coast what, with you know, what is now Croatia. I mean, that's my most early vivid memory. But most of my memories are probably very different from my kids. We, Like I say, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have phones. Uh, I, I mean, we got our first computer, I think it was about nine. We got an old BBC, which I play games on sometimes. But most of my childhood was outside. You know, it's a time like now when you ask me about it and I reflect on it, I, I realize how shit this technology has been for the world. Like both brilliant and shit. It's brilliant if I'm away traveling with work. When I'm away with work, I can FaceTime my daughter and catch up with her, right? Whereas back then you wouldn't even do a phone call because it's so expensive. And so what has enabled us to have this great connection and communication around the world, I think it's also damaged all of our lives to the extent that we... Yeah, if we don't show discipline, we're, t we're too much stuck on these screens and you not spending enough time with our kids. And something I know, I'm, like, I'm conscious that I'm a hypocrite about. So I have two kids and I have some similar thoughts around what it's going to be like to grow up in the age of you know, virtual reality and um, the metaverse, etc. I understand the way you got into Bitcoin was very unique. And I think there is a very sort of personal side to it. 
I understand that your mother has some health challenges and that's you know, involved in how you got into Bitcoin. Could you share a little bit about that? So my journey into Bitcoin was two primary touches. The first time, it wasn't that unique. I mean, I discovered the Silk Road. Like a lot of people from class of 2013, yeah, one of my friends told about me about it. I read about it and I was just like, wow, this is wild. Like there's a website where you can buy anything. But I didn't really pay any attention to the technology, even though I was introduced to Bitcoin and I went on local Bitcoins and bought some and moved it around. There was no part of me in that journey that went, what is Bitcoin? How does it work? I didn't go on Reddit. I didn't go on uh, the forums. It was just like, it was a, a tool. So I got the tool. I, it's like, a, like I got a hammer, but I didn't research why a hammer is good. I just used the hammer. And so I didn't really pay attention to it. And then what happened was, you know, it was about 2014, my mum was diagnosed with cancer. At the end of 2016, it was getting pretty desperate. And I was you know, saying to my parents, my mum and dad, like, we should try the cannabis oil. And the only way you could buy that was via a, a website similar to the Silk Road. It was a dark web marketplace. And at that time, you don't really care what the, the law is in the UK. This is a medical treatment I want to try for my mother. So I explained it to my dad. We went and bought some Bitcoin on, I think it was Coinbase. And and then we purchased the, the cannabis oil, but it was a bit too late for mum, sadly. But at that time, it clicked differently with me here. Because at that time, it was like, oh, hold on a second. There's a government rule here that says I can't use this, you know, plant, essentially, this extract from a plant to treat someone, that shouldn't be a rule that I, sh that I should care about. Wow, luckily there's these things I can use to get around that. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And you know, there was a lot going on in my life at that point, Mauricio. I'd uh, separated from my wife, um, my company had crashed, and I was just kind of in this kind of lot, like purgatory, not knowing what to, to do. I had Litecoin, uh, Monero, I was a big fan of Monero. I, you know, I bought everything. I was just like, let's buy everything. Yeah, everything was going up. And then, you know, 2017 was a wild year, a bit like uh, 2020, 2021. And then I kind of realized, Mauricio, that like th this trading thing isn't for me. I've got to do something else. And I'd met this guy called Rich Roll, runs a podcast, and I really liked his life. And I said to him, I said, I like your life. I, w I want the same. How do you do it? And he said, follow this course buy this equipment, off you go. I, I followed the course, I bought the equipment. And I think three days later, I did episode one of What Bitcoin Did, which was about November the 17th, 2017. Peter's podcast, What Bitcoin Did, has been one of my favorite shows since I started listening to it about four years ago. And in 2019, I made one of my Bitcoin dreams come true when I had the honor of being a guest on the 71st episode to talk about Bitcoin and Venezuela. Can you tell us a little bit about what about that first show? Like, how did you go about? How about how did you go about getting your first guest? Um, how, how did you feel after recording that first show? And and when I guess, what at what point during that process or that journey podcasting did you feel that you had traction? That you had people that were just rooting and waiting for your very next episode? I mean, the first interview was Luke Martin. He was a guy I used to kind of interact with on Twitter. He's a trader, a good friend of mine now, and we stay in regular touch. He just said he was in LA and I was in LA. So I messaged him and said, look, hi, Luke, I'm about to start a podcast. Do you want to be my first guest? And he said, yeah. So I got an Uber over with all the equipment and set it up. And you know, I'd lit I had my questions written down and, you know, we sat and he I think he offered me a burger and a beer and we sat and we did it. I I've never listened. I, yeah, I haven't gone back and listened to it. I dread to listen to it. God, it probably is awful. And I did it and I was like, yeah, that's great. And I put it out there and that was show one. And then... I went back to the UK and uh, I was spoke to another trader, uh, day trader Nick, and that was the second show. But the the first proper big show I got was Jameson Lop. Actually, yeah, I seen him on Twitter and with his big beard and his gun and his make make Bitcoin great again, uh, Maba hat. Yeah, I messaged him and said, "Hey, I'm uh, Peter. I've just launched this podcast. Can I come out and see you and interview you about Bitcoin? And can you take me to shoot a gun?" <laughs> he was like, "Yeah." So flew out to Raleigh. We yeah, you know, I've just released a show with him again last week. He's just come on. We were talking about this because he took me out to shoot guns. Which was my first time I shot a gun and we made the show. And then he took me to barbecue, which I didn't tell him. I was um, you know, a vegetarian at the time. So I ended up eating meat for my first time in however long. 
And then from that, he got me the Charlie Lee interview. It's weird. You don't ever feel like you're getting traction. It's a bit like this. Let me explain to you. Like, if you go and look at a picture of you 10 years ago, Mauricio, you go, fucking hell, I've changed. But every day when you look in the mirror, you just look the same, right? You just look the same. It's only over periods of time. And it's a bit the same as running a show. You know, one week to the next, you see no difference. But if you look at a year ago, it's like, oh, well, we've come this far. We've done this. There's, there's certain moments like when you get your first sponsor, reach out and say, I want to sponsor the show. It's like, wow, you want to pay me to talk to tell people about your product? Wow, that's really cool. And, and undoubtedly, when I sat down with, you know, Nay Bukele, it's like, <laughs> It's more of a, what the fuck's going on here? How am I sat with the president of a country doing an interview? There's moments like that where you have to just sit back and you reflect. But you don't ever feel like you get traction. And if anything, I still have massive Im- imposter syndrome. I'm like, I think I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I honestly think I'm shit. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I listen back. I think my voice sounds stupid. I'm like, why does anyone listen to this? <laughs> I love your podcast because you focus so much on human rights. You could have chosen to teach about speculation or, or gains or tokens. Like, you know, how, how did, I guess, your experiences, maybe by solving your own problem and a very personal one, kind of make you focus on that humanitarian aspect of Bitcoin? The h- human rights side of things is really important to me because it's, this is what Bitcoin is primarily about. Bit- Bitcoin wasn't designed for people to speculate and get rich off. But it grow it, it naturally grows because people do that. And I've covered that. You know, we used to make a trading show with Willy Woo, and those shows would do brilliant. They were our biggest shows, 140,000, 150,000 downloads a month every time. The problem was is that I didn't enjoy making them uh, uh, because nothing against Willy, it's just it's a distraction, like talking about price. And you can be totally wrong and distract people. Uh, so we dropped those shows. Um, and I want to focus on conversations with interesting people where I learn something. And that can be anything from a Texas miner to Alex Gladstein talking about the uh, IMF or the World Bank. You know, that could be somebody in Belarus using Bitcoin because they're trying to protest against Lukashenko. It can be any, I will talk to anyone as long as the story is interesting. But I think I keep getting dragged to the human rights side of things because of Alex, like our mutual friend, Alex Gladstein. He's, by the way, I think I think he's cloned himself because I don't know how he writes so much as well as do his job and everything else. But he inspires me so much. Everything he does, I pay close attention to. Whenever he reaches out, reaches out to me and says I'm working on something, I read it. So he's drawn me into that world. And I, I just think, you know, that's a, what he's doing is the most important use cases for this technology. Even though the word Bitcoin is used in the title of the podcast, the show has covered other cryptocurrencies over the years. So why did Peter choose to eventually focus strictly on Bitcoin? I, I had seen people talking about, you know, shit coins and everyone should focus on Bitcoins and calling everyone a scammer. But you knew and you're like, well, I don't, this doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, the early days of the podcast, it was called What Bitcoin Did. But I would, you know, I had Charlie Lee on the podcast, Fluffy Pony. You know, I had people associated with BCH. I interviewed uh, Roger Veer, Craig, I like I'd interview, you know, in the early days, you interview whoever you can get. And I, you know, the, the Bitcoin maxi thing hadn't twigged to me. Plus also, I just kind of like didn't care that other people were doing other things. Uh, it's something which I am conflicted with now. But there was a, there was an incident whereby I was uh, making a bunch of shows. And one of them was, uh, it was, I think it was doing a series on lightning and Peter Ryzen had got in touch and said, look, I think there's some issues with Lightning. Come and, can I do the interview? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do the interview. I didn't know. And like, I knew he was a BCH guy, but I didn't know that, like, what people thought of him. And I was in Boston at the time, and I was about to fly out to Hong Kong for Token 2049, the conference I was emceeing. And so I was sat on the uh, runway in Boston. I was getting a lot of shit online for this interview coming up. And I did, what some people fail to recognize is when you come in, you don't really know one person from the other. You don't know their relevance, what they've done in the past. But Shinobi was giving me hell. I was like, what's this all about? It's just an interview. I'll talk to anyone. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. blah. So I just sat on this plane. It was a 15-hour flight. I land in Hong Kong, uh, get on the Wi-Fi, and my phone is in meltdown of alerts. 
And so it become this whole big debate on Twitter where people are saying he shouldn't be doing it. He should be doing it. Some people attacking, some people defending me. And I was like, God, why is it that people really care about this? And after that, I was kind of like this realization is like, I think Bitcoin's different. And I tested myself. I was like, okay, am I using Bitcoin? Yes. I've used it in the past. I'm using it now. It has a use. Am I using any of these shit coins? No. Will I use them in the future? No. Is there any use case for me? No. You know, they're just not relevant to me. So fine. I announced, I was like, right, the show's going to go Bitcoin only. We'll focus entirely on Bitcoin. Yeah. And that, that's what it is. And then over time, I kind of got it more. And I don't feel completely aligned with the most hardcore Bitcoin maxis, especially when it, when it bleeds into tangential subjects where there's like an ideology that wraps around Bitcoin, because I can't pretend I'm somebody I'm not. But, but, but I have come to the realization like how important this is. And that's why I'm entirely focused on it. Yeah. And, and listen, I, I actually try to tell people when, when they're trying to reason to themselves, why are people jumping or aping into these, uh, you know, uh, speculative tokens with, with Bitcoin being so clean and, and having such a great long-term roadmap. But I, I tell people often, it's like, casinos are as old as time. Like a lot of people like to speculate on some of these tokens and a lot of people just want a lottery ticket. They don't want to create wealth slowly over time. They just want to roll the dice. And I think we've gotten to this kind of extreme technology that makes that, uh, you know, and some, some people take advantage of that and push it to the extremes. Look, Mauricio, I think the majority of people aping into shit coins are doing it for the same reason they first ape into Bitcoin. I know there are people who discover Bitcoin as a tool and use it, and that definitely happens. But I always think of when I get a Facebook DM or a text from a friend or a phone call, it, it's always the same. Nobody messaged me and says, you know what, Pete? I think it's time for me to learn about decentralized money. They're like, is now a good time to buy Bitcoin? And I'm always replying the same. I'm always like, no, now's a good time to learn about Bitcoin. Uh, there's, there's never like an individual time where I can say, yes, now's a good time. Who knows? I mean, it could go up, it could go down. But now's the time to learn about it. And it's the old saying, like, come for the gains stay for the revolution it's if you do the people tend to discover it and then do the work they don't tend to do the work then discover it that's not to say that's everyone but most people they just want to better their lives they want some investments which are like a a hack to forward themselves a little bit in life and so i understand it and i i I talked about it once on a podcast i think you'll like this i said the problem with being a bitcoiner it's like going to a conference in vegas but you're in a really boring glass room in a hotel and you're having a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, but through the glass, you see everybody else having fun. That's just what it's like being a Bitcoin or a world of shitcoiners. During a bull market, you're seeing people like post their punk, you know, this punk, whatever they've bought and it's their avatar. And you're seeing people go to these parties in Miami, which are NFT parties. These people are having fun. There's no doubt they're having fun. We have a little bit less fun in Bitcoin because we're, we're a little bit more serious and we're talking about bringing down the Fed and you know activism, which is cool and important stuff, but it's, it is a different world. And sometimes, Mercy, I think I'm glad they're there because they're, they're a necessary distraction to learn about the importance of Bitcoin. If you don't have these shit coins, you don't have the lens always to why Bitcoin is so important. You know, many people look up to you, right? And so my question to you would be, what advice would you have for somebody that is, you know, considering a career or starting out building content for Bitcoin uh, and, and kind of dreaming of getting to a point where you are today. I mean, the first, the first thing I say to anyone, if you're going to do this, well, don't go and do this planning a career because most people don't get a career out of it. If you, if you try and plan it as a career, you'll probably be disappointed. So don't do that because you'll overthink it, right? You'll overthink it and you'll, you'll be like, why haven't I got so, enough downloads and why won't anyone sponsor him? Why can't I get any guests? Don't do that. That's the worst thing to do. Just do it because you want to do it. Be prepared to be both, well, be both patient and consistent because this stuff takes years. Yeah. You know, I'm not Michelle Obama launching on Spot- Spotify, you know, and, and neither are you if you're doing this. You are Joe Nobody from shit town in nowhere and nobody cares. So the first show you release, Like five people will care and they'll be your friends, but they might tell a friend. And that's going to just take time. And you got to, if you're going to release two shows a week, 
it's two shows a week, every week for years, and never missing one. Consistently turning up, even when it's crap, even when you've got a dip in downloads, even when it feels like nobody cares, even when you feel like you can't get the guests you want, because you will get wins. You will get some guests that's special who will like it and tweet it out. So that's the second thing. Like, So firstly, don't plan it to be a career. And then secondly, accept it's going to take a long time and you're going to have to be consistent. Uh, the third thing I would say is get your head around marketing. I've, you know, I've got no doubt some of, some of what's happened with this is like, I, came, I think I came up with a good name or well, my friend came up with it. Good brand. I built a nice website. You know, I looked at SEO. I, I, I go on Canva and create my uh, graphics. I, you know, I, I looked at every single tool that I could use to make this work. And then the last thing is like, just don't be somebody you're not, which sounds like such a cliche, like, oh, just be yourself, be authentic. But like, genuinely, just be yourself. I am Pete. I say stupid shit. I like football and heavy metal. And so, and I make stupid mistakes. I mean, I, I say, sometimes I say the most ridiculous things that are completely wrong, but I'll admit it when I'm wrong. And I think, I think in this world of like podcasting, that's what people are looking for. They want authenticity because they want someone they can trust. Oh, I think that's, that's phenomenal advice. What would you want the legacy of what Bitcoin did to be? I would like people to say that Pete was fair with his show. He tried to do the right thing. He tried to give everyone a voice and tried to bring people together. And what Bitcoin did helped spread the knowledge and use of what is one of the most important technologies in the world. That, that, that kind of legacy, that would mean a lot to me. You have podcasts, plural. You've bought a football club. You've emceed the top Bitcoin conferences in the world. What is next for the Peter McCormack empire? Less empire, more focus, probably. That's what Danny would say. Um, um, hmm, good question. The football club's really important to me now because my town's really important to me. I'm from Bedford. I love it. Uh, I think it's very easy to, if you're from a small shit town like Bedford, to say, oh, I don't want to be here. I actually love it. I love the people. It's beautiful. It's got a beautiful river. And I think they deserve something. And I'd like, to, I'd like to give them some, my little world, just have some success with my football team. I think that would be great. So I'm absolutely focused on winning the league with them. Um, I would like to launch an, uh, another podcast. There's lots of interviews I want to do, which are nothing to do with Bitcoin. Creatively, I'd like to do that. And that's something I'm considering. And I'd like to do more film. I've just made my third film out in Texas about mining. Uh, I love the filmmaking process. I'd like to make more film. But beyond that, I think that's the limit. It's more film, more podcasts, more football, and you know, somehow hang it. I hope it all hangs together and doesn't all come crashing down. Uh, listen, man, it sounds like you, you, you said at the beginning of the show, just be yourself and whatever you do, just make sure it's genuine. And it sounds like you're doing exactly what you want to be doing. Uh, and because of that, I think the content and the, and the passion and the love comes across in the content. And uh, it's, been, it's been an absolute pleasure listening to you, working with your show and now having you on here. Uh, you know, it's kind of come full circle. Yes, brother. Well, listen, uh, I'm glad we're friends. I'm glad I've got to know you. It's going to be an interesting year. Uh, 2024 is probably going to be crazy, but look, uh, we just we just keep going, right? When Peter used Bitcoin to purchase cannabis oil for his mother, he wasn't trying to change the world. He was trying to help better the life of someone he loved deeply. But when he understood the potential and how Bitcoin could help others in similar situations, he wanted to learn more. Like most guests that have joined me on this podcast, it took some time and exploration before he found out how Bitcoin could play a role in his life and how he could contribute back to the movement. Starting his podcast was a way to learn from others, and this work would eventually shape Peter's beliefs on Bitcoin. After five years going, he's still interviewing the brightest minds in the space and doing it with authenticity. His show has become a part of Bitcoin's history, and I believe it's a must listen. Whether you discover Bitcoin as a way to pay for something, a way to protect the value of your savings, or simply diversifying your own investments, I believe there's always more to learn.
If you enjoyed this Because of Bitcoin episode, I would be very grateful for the five seconds it would take you to drop us a review and give us a rating on your favorite podcasting platform. This will really help us reach even more listeners. And if you'd like to learn more about Bitcoin, be sure to check out our newsletter by subscribing at letn.io. That's letn.io. Again, this was Mauricio Di Bartolomeo. Stay tuned for our next episode. And until then, muchas gracias y los quiero mucho. Chao, chao.